Talking. Now let's talk about the man who's very much been in the news for the last week, but for all the wrong reasons. UKIP leader Henry Bolton. Good morning to you, Henry. Morning, good morning. Good morning. So you are still, despite a vote of no confidence from the National Executive Committee of your party and the resignation of two thirds of your front bench team from the uh, the front bench, you are still leader of UKIP. Why do you think you should be staying on? Because I'm, I'm respecting the constitutional process, which is the uh, uh, the NEC uh, has a vote of no confidence. If they pass that, which they did, then it goes to an extraordinary general meeting of the members. And uh, that's the constitutional process. I respect it. Um, I didn't uh, initiate it. The NEC did. So uh, I'm just respecting that and m- moving down that, that, that process. Uh, are you doing what uh, Nigel Farage, the former UKIP leader, uh, suggested, doing a Corbyn, effectively uh, what Jeremy Corbyn did? He lost all of his front bench uh, or most of his front bench. Uh, they had a vote of no confidence in him. And then he took the issue to the party membership. But he was re-elected twi- twice uh, with a massive majority. Uh, are you expecting the UKIP members are going to back you? I, I am, actually, yes. And in, indeed, the NEC, there's only one person on the NEC who voted for me in the, uh, by their own comments, um, uh, voted for me in the leadership contest. All the others uh, voted for other candidates. And indeed, that does not in itself reflect the, uh, the, the, the voting that took place across the membership in, in that contest. So uh, you know, th- we know that the NEC does not represent the membership in that sense. Um, why do you think the UKIP members will back you? Do you think that says quite a lot about them, where they're just really quite happy to have a, a leader of the party who's been dating and is still, well, in some sort of relationship uh, with a, a woman who has sent racist remarks about uh, a future uh, bride of Prince Harry? I mean, does, it, is that, does that tell us something about UKIP party members, that they're just not um, really not bothered by racist people? Not at all. I think um, that most, most people will realise that we've moved on from that. That's been dealt with. Um, in a disciplinary sense, uh, that's been dealt with, as it should be, quite right and proper that it is. Uh, They were abhorrent remarks. Uh, We move on. What I think most members want now is that the party gets fighting fit, that we can actually mobilise in order to uh, hold the government to account for delivering independence. And I say independence because uh, Theresa May has done a fairly good job of, of, uh, of twisting the word Brexit to mean simply leaving the European Union not regaining our independence in all areas of government and administration for, from, from Brussels. So, um, you know, that's an important piece of work and that's what the, the party needs to be engaged upon now. Well, the party should be engaged in it, but of course, Piers, still talking to you about uh, this issue with your your girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, Joe Marnie. You say we've moved on from that after her nasty racist comments about Meghan Markle. Um, I don't think we have moved on. I don't think the country has moved on, or indeed the party, because you haven't moved on. You said you'd broken up a relationship with this woman after a disgusting tweets and then you were spotted having a cosy dinner with her last week you haven't moved on at all have you you're still in a relationship with her uh, the, i'm moving on in, in as much as the, uh, the the constitution needs rewriting the nec needs reforming and uh, we need to deliver our politics. But you're still in a relationship. You're still, you're the leader of a political party in this country and you are still in a relationship with a woman who sent the most vile racist tweets uh, about uh, Prince Harry's fiance. We've moved on from that point. You're still uh, in a relationship we, with we, her. We, we, I'm in contact with what? her. No, you're not in contact with her. You had a cosy dinner with her. You know, I mean, OK, if you've got a face, do you have, are, you, are you on Facebook, Henry? Uh, I am. Yeah, and what's your relationship status on there? Married, uh, divorced, single, in a relationship? What, what's your relationship status? still married, I think. It but, is, yeah, uh, it's complicated. Yeah, that's the one you've got. It's complicated. <laughs> no, but this is the thing, Henry. This look, is this is the uh, thing. This is the bit I find. This is the bit I don't understand. Julia, I let, could not be me... in a relationship with someone who held the sort of vile, racist views that Joe Marnie held. I could not have sex with them. I could not go to dinner with them. I could not be friends with them. So, what does it say about you? And what would it say about your party if your members support you that they're just fine with that and you Listen, are just fine with that? We, we, we have moved on. We have that. not we, moved on, Henry. You, we, no, you, you, perhaps you have not moved on. I have moved on because my entire focus, everything that I am doing now, everything that I am doing is related to getting the party fighting fit. Now, it is up to the, up to the members at the extraordinary general meeting under the new, normal constitutional process to decide what happens next. But in the meantime, 
I'm getting on with my actual job, and my job is to ensure that this party can project its voice into British politics. Well, you say that. Gerard Batten, one of your former leading members of your of your uh, shadow cabinet, your, your, your front bench team, he was your Brexit spokesman until a few days ago, he says your position is completely untenable, he told me this morning. He said that we, the party, have become a laughing stock, and he's accused you of sabotage, collapsing UKIP from the inside, and hanging on like muck to a blanket. So but you're not Ger- doing your job of no, making Gerard, UKIP fighting Gerard fit. would do that. Gerard would say that because Gerard has put himself up as a future leader of the party. So, you know, the, what you're seeing there is, is, is you're seeing that, that opportunism. Now, in, indeed, um, you know, that, that's one of the examples of how this party has been riven by division for a long time. The NEC has perpetuated that. It's failed to deal with disciplinary action, uh, 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 complaints in a, in a timely manner. We have got, if this party is going to be successful going forward under my leadership or anybody else's, then we actually have to, to focus as one team, uh, united and coherent going forward. Now, that has not been the case for, for some years, as, as previous leaders will attest to. So that's the work I'm engaged upon. If I'm successful, the party has a chance. If I'm unsuccessful, then quite honestly, I think in any circumstances, the party is going to really struggle to make its voice heard and to continue surviving. Uh, you're, you're basically saying it's me or nobody. I'm the we, best uh, you've got. I'm, the, I'm someone who's dating the, a racist woman. The, we all know about it. And I'm the best you've the, got, you kid. You know, when, when we had the last leadership contest, I, I don't know whether you said this, but most people were saying that you, this had to work. UKIP could not survive another leadership contest. And indeed, that's my opinion. We cannot do that. The, the NEC has decided to embark on that, on that route. Uh, fine, that's their decision. But they have, as they have done before, exposed the party to a great deal of risk in doing that. Their job is actually to ensure the coherence and the unity of the party. Uh, um, what should happen now is we should be drawing a line under what's happened up until now. It's been dealt with appropriately by the party. And indeed, we need to move forward on delivering the politics. This is the most, imp- the most important question of the day facing this country is that we regain our independence from the European Union. That is the most important question. And the NEC needs to be focused on that yep. rather than perpetuating a political uh, or a, a, an argument over uh, entirely separate issues. That's been dealt with. Yep. So you, let's you keep you telling us we've moved on, but I'm just not entirely sure that uh, either the party or the country has moved on from that. Henry Bolton, uh, UKIP leader for now. Thank you for joining us here at Talk Radio. Let me bring my guests back in on this. Michael Fabricant, Tory MP, and Benjamin Butterworth from the Iron Pink News. Michael, first of all, just very briefly, do you think Henry's going to survive? Oh, well, you know, I mean, he keeps on saying we are still in contact with her. I mean, what He's does still that actually mean? Her. They're still dating. Come on. I thought Matt summed it up perfectly. You know, the great cartoonist in The Telegraph, and he had this caption of people walking past uh, a UKIP office, and in the min- in the window was says, join UKIP today and be leader by 5 p.m. Well, I, I, was a bit worried, it up. I was a bit worried yesterday. At some point, we were all going to discover we were a member of the UKIP front bench. <laughs> all these people were resigning. Uh, Benjamin, briefly from you. I think he left the stable union of his wife for a newer alternative and it turns out that wasn't as good and maybe you should have been back in the union and I think that might be a lesson from for us all. Oh, you well, remain indeed. in you. <laughs> uh, thank you very much to you both. The time is 7.55.